Now, there's a lot of myths out there about food, like eat fat. Like, there's a whole movement of people that think we need butter and cream, and children should be raised on full-fat milk and cheese and lard and bacon. And you feel kind of guilty if you try to eat bacon and lard, and it doesn't work for you. Um, High-fat foods is, um, makes us fat is another myth. If I eat fat, I'm going to be fat. Um, another one is drop the carbs and eat paleo. That's the only way to go. Or that we should all be vegetarian or macrobiotics the best diet or the Mediterranean. That's a big one. Everybody, I hear doctors say this all the time. The best diet out there is the Mediterranean diet. That is not true if you have the, what's called the APOE gene. So no, everybody shouldn't be on olive oil. Um, so, when you start, let's say you're a healthcare professional or you're a nutritionist and you want to help somebody or just for yourself, where do you start? Well, first of all, you want to gather all the information you can about yourself. What's your diet? Literally write down what you're eating and then um, what kind of fats, carbs, and proteins are you eating? And then write down your lifestyle habits. Like, do you tend to stay up too late? You can't sleep at night because you're staring into your computer. Um, are you a bad water drinker and so on? Like, really do an analysis of what you're doing. And then um, the other thing that's important to know is that for any con most major chronic diseases in the body, there's not just one gene. There's a variety, a bunch of genes that you would want to look at to see what your risk is for, say, diabetes. Now, let's take the, I'm going to take a few genes related to the topic of weight gain, because weight gain is an enormous issue in this country. And a lot of people are very frustrated because they can't put on weight or they can't lose weight, and they don't understand why. And they feel like, oh my gosh, I don't eat anything. I'm starving myself. I exercise, and it's just hopeless. I don't know what to do. Well, the genes will, will tell you what to do. And a normal body mass index is 18.5 to 24.9. Depends on your bones. If you're small boned, you know, you're closer to 18.5 or under. Obese is um, over 30. 65% of America is over the obese line today. So we do need to understand our genes because they'll help us fix this problem. Um, some of the myths about obesity is that overeaters lack willpower. What's wrong with you? You don't have any willpower? And you see a big you know, obese person walking in the door and you immediately think less of him because of that? Or that eating fat makes us fat? Or um, that all fats are the same? Or you are what you eat? That saying, a very popular saying, you are what you eat, is no longer true. It, now what we know is you are what your DNA says, and you are your, what you digest, and you are what's happening in the gut with the microbiome, which is another one of my favorite topics. Now, these genes that we're going to talk about right now very quickly are all related to obesity. Sometimes people cruelly call them the fatso genes because they make people fat. But the sad truth about that is that these people are suffering tremendously because they're not eating the right diet and they have these genes. So the FTO gene is a really important one to check. Uh, if you've got your 23andMe, uh, some people heard David and I in an interview and, and Angela told me that a lot of people were bringing their 23andMe uh, gene test. And that's the least expensive way to have your genes tested is through 23andMe. But then they just send you the raw data and you've got to figure out what that, those genes mean. So the FTO gene is for um, an important one to check. This gene is the gene that makes you very addicted to foods. You don't feel full when you eat. These people, about 20 to 30 minutes later, they're hungry again. They think about food all the time. If they lose weight, they usually gain it back. Um, people who have this gene really, really are suffering. And on, add to that, on top of the gene problem, we've got a diet in the US. This diet is addictive. We eat gluten, which is addictive, and sugar, which is addictive. And we have you know, other addictive foods like caffeine and alcohol and so on. These are addictive foods. So you can imagine if the people are eating those foods and they've got this gene, they're really in trouble. So you can help them. Uh, there's, as I said before, there's always a fix or an intervention. What's the intervention for the, for the FTO gene? Fiber. The number one most important thing is these people need to be on a very high fiber diet. They've got to be on a very low glycemic diet, like no sugar, like the Buddy Culture diet is no sugar with a lot of vegetables. You know, where 
I've been promoting, uh, recommending 80% vegetables and just a small amount of low sugar fruits. That's a perfect diet for these people and they're gonna lose weight and keep it off. What I've found is that fermented foods are extremely important also. There's something that's happening with you when you eat the fermented foods with all those amazing bacteria and they get down there in your gut with the gut microbiome and they send signals. The, the gut microbiome, by the way, um, is, you know, you've got trillions of bacteria in the gut. Every single bacteria in the gut has its own set of genes. Just like we have our own set of genes, every single one of them has their own genes. They're, we're signaling back and forth to each other. Our, what we do and think and eat is signaling the bacteria, triggering their green genes, and then they signal back to us. So there's this truck crosstalk going on. And so fermented foods, for some reason, I noticed this many years ago after people started reporting to me that they ate fermented foods and their cravings went away. I think there's a number of reasons. I think you're much better nourished. You're digesting better, obviously, but there's a really important relationship with fermented foods and these genes, which I'm going to dig out as time goes by. More, more to come there.